Hi everyone, today I thought I would show you how to make a really simple sauerkraut. Um, sauerkraut is essentially just cabbage and salt that has been allowed to ferment um, in a glass jar. So all you need to do that is a standard white cabbage, you want a standard hard cabbage, you get them all year round and they're really cheap. Um, so you want a cabbage, you want some salt, I use the fine Himalayan salt, any natural salt is fine, you want fine salt. Table salt, not so good because it's only pure sodium and it's got additives in it, so you don't want table salt. Any natural salt is fine. As I say, I use the fine Himalayan salt. And then you want a jar. Ideally, for fermenting, I use these clip-top jars, which are absolutely perfect um, because you can clip them shut and you can keep the oxygen out of your ferment while you're fermenting it, which is exactly what you want to do to stop getting mould in it. A jar that size, that's a litre clip-top jar, that generally works really well for one cabbage worth of sauerkraut. Um, so you don't need to sterilise anything. What we're doing um, when making sauerkraut is we're harnessing all the good bacteria that we have on our cabbage um, and we're creating a salt brine which means that the lactobacillus bacteria on our cabbage can survive in that and they will start to thrive and grow and they'll produce um, acid which will bring the pH down which means that pathogenic bacteria can't survive they can, nor can they survive in a salt brine and they can't survive in an acidic environment either. So fermenting things is actually one of the safest ways to preserve them. And it's been around for hundreds of years. That's how people used to um, preserve food to see them through the winter. They would uh, harvest all their cabbages, ferment them all and keep them in big barrels in their cellars for months and months and months. Uh, and then you end up with something that's actually much better than what you started with. Uh, and that's a really cool thing uh, about fermenting cabbages on their own actually are incredibly good for you. They've got vitamin C, they've got fibre, they've got all sorts of great stuff. But when you ferment them in a salt brine, the vitamin C content shoots up by a marked amount, a huge amount. Um, everything becomes more bioavailable. The lactobacillus bacteria, and these are like the bacterial bouncers, these are the guys that you want in your side, these are like the tough guys of the bacterial world, and that's generally what you've got in any, um, any vegetable. Uh, it's lactobacillus um, bacteria you have. So, what we're going to do is we need to first slice a cabbage. We're going to take a leaf off because we're going to use a leaf to pack everything down and keep it all under the brine. So first up, get your cabbage. We're going to just take and try and get it off in one if we can. Just get it off in one and then we're going to trim it. We'll trim it at the end and we're going to put that. Right, so I've managed to get that off. So that goes aside. Right, you don't need to bother washing anything. Cabbages, so you're, you're harnessing all the good bacteria on it, so unless it's got dirt on it, wash the dirt off, otherwise don't bother. Um, so we're going to just cut it into four. And we're going to take the core out. So you've got a big core down the middle, so what we're going to do is just cut it into four. And we're going to remove the core. Traditionally, what they used to do was actually use the core to um, keep their cabbage all submerged in the brine, but that tends to not work particularly well because if it's not under the brine, you can get mould on it, which is not ideal, but I've got other ways to show you um, to keep them down. So, right, so I'm going to... Right, so that's my cabbage. I've cut the core out of it. Other thing actually I was going to say was when you get a cabbage don't put it in the fridge because it dries it out slightly and it makes it harder to get the brine out of it. Um, so if you get a, try and use it as fresh as you can um, and if you're just going to store it don't put it in the fridge. So the options here are you want to then shred your cabbage as finely as you can. Um, various ways you can do that. If anyone has a mandolin you can use a mandolin to shred it. Um, these are a bit lethal to be honest but they do work very well. You can get really nice fine cabbage with that. Other thing you can use, which I have, is one of these wee peelers, um, which is actually really good. So you can do that and you'll get really nice fine shredded bits of cabbage. Or you can just use your sharp knife, or if you have a food processor, then you can put it through your slicer attachment and your food processor, um, and that will slice it finely enough as well. So bear in mind that the finer you slice it, the faster it will ferment because there's more surface area. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shred my cabbage up today with my wee peeler um, I, and once I've got that done I'll show you the next step. Right, 
right, that's all my, my cabbage shredded up. I uh, put it in a bowl. Um, next step to do is to add the salt. Now, this is something that people are always a bit concerned about. Oh, there's loads of salt and sauerkraut. Oh, that's not good for your blood pressure. Or how much salt do you add? Uh, and actually, to be honest, getting the salt level is really quite important. As I said earlier, lactobacillus bacteria, the only ones that can survive in a salt brine, pathogenic bacteria can't. If you don't get the salt level right, there's a chance that pathogenic bacteria might survive in it. So the safe level of salt to use is between one and a half and two and a half percent. I tend to usually just go and play for go for two percent, which is fairly straightforward. So if you have a cabbage that weighs a kilogram, then you would add two percent of that is twenty grams. I've actually weighed my cabbage. You don't need to weigh it, but if you want to, and a lot of people feel safer weighing it, that is fine. I've weighed my cabbage. I've got 800 grams of shredded cabbage here. So on that premise, if I add 2% um, of that, is that's 16 grams. Uh, and that is roughly about a, a level tablespoon is between 15 and 16. So I've weighed that. That's 16 grams. So I'm putting 16 grams of salt, which is a tablespoon, onto my 800 uh, of shredded cabbage. Um, and... Um, that's actually not that much salt, bearing in mind that when you make sauerkraut, you're not meant to sit and eat it a whole jar. It's a condiment, you have a small amount at a time, so the salt level really is not, you know, I wouldn't be remotely concerned about it. And some people try and make sauerkraut without salt and do it with celery, I wouldn't do it. This is a traditional way to do it. Also, um, bearing in mind, you know, hundreds of years ago, nobody had scales, nobody was weighing their cabbage. How they did it traditionally was shredded the cabbage and they just salted it and they tried it. Um, and it, it tastes a bit salty, but it certainly shouldn't taste really salty. And if you oversalt your cabbage, you've added too much salt. You know, the only thing you can do then is to add more grated veggies to it because as you ferment it, um, it will get more salty rather than less salty. So I've, I've put in my, my salt. So again, just to, that's 2% salt that I've gone for. Uh, I've added there, so I'm going to put my gloves on to get my sensitive skin uh, and then the fun bit starts. What you need to then do is massage the salt into the cabbage. Kids love doing this actually, it's really quite good fun. Again, if you have put your cabbage in the fridge, it's harder to get the brine out of it. Traditionally, people used to use big wooden mallets and hammers and things, but all you're going to do, and if you've shredded it up really finely, it doesn't take that long. And then what will happen is you'll have lots of brine. So I've been massaging that for about five, ten minutes maybe. Um, it's a wee bit sore on my arms because it's a bit high up. We'd normally be doing this a bit lower down, but um, all I've done is really just squeezed it, massaged it and squeezed it. If you can see, yeah, actually it doesn't take that long to actually get brine out of it. So you're not adding brine, you're actually just creating it. The salt pulls the water out of the cell walls. Um, and that actually starts to break it down, which means it'll start to ferment faster. So you can see I've got plenty of brine in that. Now I'm just showing you this is a simple sauerkraut, but what I would I don't tend to make just a plain sauerkraut. I add all sorts of other things, but I wanted to just show you a plain one. But what I'm going to do is add about a tablespoon of caraway seeds. Caraway seeds are really good for your digestion, um, and it's a really simple thing to add. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon um, of caraway, just because I like that. Then I'll close that over. Right, so then we're just going to mix it in. So the next thing to do, once you've got your brine, if you find that you haven't got a lot of brine from the cabbage and you've been massaging it for a while, what you can do is just put a wee tea towel over it and leave it for half an hour and then come back. If you, if you try it, uh, it tastes salty, but it shouldn't taste really salty. So if you've got that level right, about 2% is just a nice level of salt. Right, next up is we want to put our um, sauerkraut into our glass jar. Um, so, again, as you don't need to sterilise them, just wash them, make sure you've rinsed all the soap. Um, if you've any soap, make sure you've rinsed them out with hot water. And what we're going to do is just to pack, pack the sauerkraut into the jar. And you want to make sure you pack get all the air out, so give it a good, a good squeeze. And you should see the brine starting to pull above it. As I say, it's that salt brine that's going to preserve the cabbage and create the environment for the lactobacillus bacteria to get to work and create all sorts of fantastic stuff for you and your health. So, should have just about the right amount for that size of jar. 
Um, I'll just put that in. Mistake sometimes that people make is they put too much cabbage in the jar. Um, if you fill it right up to the top, there's no way you're going to be able to keep all of that underneath that brine. That's just about the right amount. You can see we've got a wee space at the top. Um, everything there is underneath the brine. So you can see that's uh, exactly the right amount. So what we're going to do next is we've got our cabbage leaf that we'd left aside. I'm going to trim the cabbage leaf. Um, and that's going to work like a wee lid to keep everything. That the mantra you have to remember for fermenting vegetables is under the brine and all is fine. You have to keep everything underneath that brine. Um, this is an anaerobic fermentation. You don't want oxygen in it at all. All the vegetables need to be underneath that brine layer where they're safe and they won't be, there'll be no um, chance of any pathogens or anything getting in there. So uh, I've cut this and you want to have your leaf that way. Uh, rather than that way because you don't want your leaf sticking out of the brine either so if you do that you can trim it to exactly the right size um, you don't want any bits of your cabbage sticking up if you push that in you can see that what that does effectively is it just holds everything underneath the brine um, and you can see that's just a perfect amount there then what you can do um, if you've got enough room, one of these wee glass goo pots, these work really well just to clip them in the top. You can sit that, now what's going to happen is that's going to overflow. You can sit that in the top and then you just clip the jar shut and that keeps it, that's going to be a perfect anaerobic environment in there for you. And again, you can see in my glass jar actually it's a bit rusty around the outside. That's because the brine will start to be displaced, but that's just on the outside. So don't throw your jar away if you've used it once and you've got rust around it. So that's a perfect um, amount for one jar. You can see the brine is right up to the top. The cabbage is down to here. It's totally covered in the brine. Um, and we're going to, what I'll do next is going to put a wee bowl underneath that because um, there's a bit on the top. Just make sure that you don't have any wee floaty bits. Clear that off. Um, what I'll do then is put a label on that. Uh, I will let that ferment. My preferred time for um, a standard crowd is between three, three to five weeks. Um, it's really up to yourself. It's a personal thing, but really the fermentation process isn't really complete until about three weeks. It goes through a bit of a process, so you have slightly different bacteria at different stages. Um, so for me, that sweet spot is about three weeks, three weeks to five. So I will leave that um, and I put it in a cupboard or you just leave it in your kitchen um, work top you can keep an eye on it don't open it there's no need to open it and every time you open it you let oxygen in these clip top jars work really really well because the brine can escape from the rubber seal but oxygen can't get in so that is a perfect environment you don't need to buy these expensive um, you know jars with uh, all sorts of um, ear locks and things on them that works fine and, and you can reuse the jars loads and loads of times as well so that's me, I'm going to put a label on that, but I'll leave that for probably for me about four weeks. I'll leave it in the cupboard, I'll then try it at four weeks, I'll open it, try it, and if it's sour enough for me then that's perfect. What I'll do is I'll decant it into smaller jars and put it in the fridge. Put it in the fridge, that stops the fermentation and that will then keep for months, um, if not years. Uh, a lot of time you can actually keep sauerkraut for a long time, especially if you've got it in smaller jars and you're not opening it. Another tip is don't put your, if you've got a big jar and you're using it and you've hardly any left, put transfer it to a smaller jar. You want to keep that head space and that oxygen level as low as you can. And again, also, if you've got a nice clip top jar, then you don't want to put that in the fridge and keep that. You want to put your sauerkraut into other jars, then you can make another batch and you can reuse your jar again. So that's about as simple as it is. So again, you just need to check with your salt level, go for 2% salt. Weigh your shredded cabbage if you want to do that, add 2% salt, make sure your jar is just clean, pack it, make sure the wee mantra under the brine and all is fine, you've got everything underneath that brine level, you've added a cabbage leaf and you've added something to weigh it down. If you don't have a glass goo pot, the cabbage leaf sometimes is enough to just, if you've got a really sort of solid cabbage leaf, sometimes that's enough to just keep it down. If not, you can add um, anything, some people use like clean stones or whatever, you can put that on top as well. Um, but again, that, that's why you're doing it, is you've got to keep everything underneath that. That's one of the most important things. So um, that's just a simple sauerkraut. So I hope you give that a go. And that will give you gut bacteria a real boost and you have tons of probiotics in that.